So how can we quantitatively analyze a sample using atomic absorption spectroscopy? Well, to start off, quantitative analysis means we're dealing with sort of analyzing or calculating amounts of a substance or concentrations. So that's what we mean by quantitative analysis. So atomic absorption spectroscopy. We know that, let's say for example, we've got a sample and we wanna see if it contains magnesium. Then what we do, we make a solution out of our sample. We spray our solution into the flame. We shine, we shine light through the flame. We shine the frequencies of light that we know are absorbed by magnesium. We shine those frequencies and we use this apparatus over here to detect whether or not those frequencies are in fact absorbed by this sample and thus whether or not this sample does contain magnesium. So that's the basic outline of how, how the process works. Now, how can we analyze something quantitatively? Well, we basically, we can work it out using this really simple, uh, simple fact, the absorbance of a frequency of light by a sample. So the absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration of metal. So when we do this, when, we, when we're checking to see whether or not these frequencies of light are absorbed by our magnesium, we, we sort of detect uh, those frequencies of light and we measure their absorbance, which tells us how much of that light it was in fact absorbed by the sample. And uh, the more, the higher the concentration of the magnesium in the solution that we're spraying, then the more of this light will be absorbed and the greater our figure for absorbance will be. So this detector produces a value for absorbance. So how can we use that value for absorbance to work out the, uh, the concentration of the magnesium? Well, basically, we need to know the more exact relationship. We know they're directly proportional, but we need to know the exact relationship between the concentration of magnesium and the absorbance of these frequencies of light. So we do that by running standards. So we run standard solutions of magnesium. So for example, we might run a standard solution containing 0 0.2, a solution with a concentration of 0.2 mole per liter, get a value for its absorbance. We might do the same with a 0 0.4 molar solution and same with 0 0.6 molar solution. So we've got some data here and some absorbances down here. Now what we do, we can then create a relationship or analyze this relationship. We do that using a graph. So we've got concentration here and absorbance up here. So we plot the data that we obtain through these standards. We plot it like this. And then we create, we have this linear relationship between absorbent and concentration. Then from there, we have a value for the absorbance uh, of our sample solution, and we, we find where that is on the axis. Then we go across to the graph, then we can work down to figure out the concentration of our sample solution. We can see we're basically just interpolating or seeing where our, our own sample fits in on this graph, and we're using the relationship constructed from this, uh, from this data to then analyze how our own absorbance, our absorbance for our own sample fits in and thus the concentration of our own sample. So let's go through a, uh, a full example of this. Let's say that we're all a little bit worried maybe about the amount of, let's say, lead in our food. We're a bit worried about the amount of lead in our food. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna analyze maybe some a sample of meat to see how much lead is in that and whether or not it's safe. So let's say we've got a 10 gram sample of meat. And let's say that the safety requirement for lead content in our food is, we'll say in every gram, we can only have we can have a maximum of 3.5 micrograms per gram. 
So in every gram of meat, we can have no more than 3.5 micrograms of lead. So we've got 10 grams of meat, and let's say we dissolve it in acid, in some sort of acid, so that we have a 100 milliliter solution containing all of that 10 grams of meat. Now, we then spray this solution into the flame, and we shine frequencies of light that are always absorbed by lead. We shine those frequencies, and then we measure the absorbance of those frequencies by our sprayed solution containing meat. And we get a value of the, for the absorbance of 1.3. Now, we want to see where that fits in, and thus we want to figure out the concentration of lead in our, in our sample. And so we're going to run some standards. So we've got uh, concentrations here, standard concentrations. Now, we've got units of parts per million. Now, part per million, we know that um, one microgram is a millionth, is one millionth of a gram. So a part per million is equal to a microgram out of a gram. And because grams and milliliters are sort of widely considered to be fairly equivalent, uh, this is also the same as one microgram per milliliter. So here we've got concentrations, standard solutions, with concentrations of three parts per million, four, seven, and nine parts per million, otherwise known as three micrograms per milliliter, and four micrograms per milliliter, and so on. I've got their values for, the, for their absorbances here. So if we make this into a graph... So we've got concentration here, absorbance here. We plug our data in, so we've got three, four, seven, and nine. So it's important to, when we do this up, rule up a very thorough, very accurate scale on either of these axes, because that's going to mean on both of these axes because that will mean that when we when we plug in our sample our sample measurement it'll be much more accurate. So we've got 3 4 7 and 9. We'll say we've got 1.2 here up to a maximum of 3.6. So here's our first data point. And our last data point, we know that these ones lie along the line. So we in reality we would rule this up and plug in you know, our 1.6 there and our 2.8 here. For now, we'll just leave it like that. So this is our graph, quite roughly drawn. We rule up a nice, a nice looking graph, a really accurate straight graph. So I've got our data points there, 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 and there. So I've got this graph. We've got a, a clear relationship between the absorbance of these frequencies of light that we tested and the concentration of lead in the solution that we are using. So now we plug in our measurements. So we've got one point, an absorbance of 1.3 for our sample. So an absorbance of 1.3, so it's about there. So we, we bring it across to see where it reaches our graph, and then we bring it down, and we see that it's a quarter of the way between three and four. So we've got an absorbance of, we've got a concentration, sorry, of our, our 100 mil solution containing the food sample of 3.25 parts per million. So that is equal to 3.25 micrograms per milliliter. We know we've got a 100 milliliter solution, so we've got 325 micrograms of lead in our 10 gram sample. We've got three in total. We've got 300 and 3.25 micrograms per milliliter. We've got 100 milliliters. Therefore, in our solution, we have 325 micrograms of lead. Now. We've got a 10 gram sample, so if we want to figure out the concentration of lead, we can say that we've got 325 micrograms in every 10 grams. And that's the same as 32.5 micrograms per gram. 
So we've got 32.5 micrograms per gram of lead in our meat. Now the limit, the maximum is 3.5, so we're clearly doing something pretty wrong. We really don't want to eat this meat at all. We've got, we've used atomic absorption spectroscopy to find out that our, uh, we're almost 10 times above the, uh, the requirement, the maximum uh, allowable level of lead in our meat. So this is how, that, so that's basically, a pretty, it's a pretty straightforward process. We get a gain in absorbance value for our own, our own solution. And then we get some absorbance values for some standard concentration solutions. And we create a graph and then we can work out the concentration of our own sample. And then we can, we can analyze that a little, in a little bit more detail to get this value here, which is apparently way, way uh, outside the, uh, the allowable range. But that's how we can quantitatively analyze a substance using atomic absorption spectroscopy.